Thank you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Even as we worship you. We give you glory, Jesus. Even as we honor you. For you are wonderful. You are marvelous. I feel, oh my goodness. You are great. Yes, you are. You are great. Yes, you are. Mighty God. You walk upon the sea and raise the dead. You reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. You are great, <clears throat> yes you are, mighty God. You walk upon the sea and raise the dead. Oh, you reign in majesty, mighty God. Everything written about you is great. You are great, you are great, you are great, oh, you are great, yes, you are great, Jesus, you are great, everything written about you is great ala koshina malataina baha oh demons tremble at your presence what a mighty god we serve what a mighty god we serve oh, glory glory hallelujah glory glory hallelujah Everything written about you is great. Demons tremble at your presence. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Oh, everything written about you is great. Hallelujah. Can somebody join me? Worship the Lord. Come on, tell him he is great. Tell him he is great. Tell him there is no one like him. That demons tremble at his presence. Demons tremble at your presence. Oh, oh, what a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Oh, la Mashataya, he is a mighty God. The great I am, hallelujah, hallelujah, he is the mighty God, yes, he is the great I am, hallelujah. Hallelujah, you are the mighty God. Yes, you are the great I am. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. You are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, you are the mighty God. You are the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody sing. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, we sing praises to your mighty name. We decree and we declare, yes, Lord, we say you are the mighty God, the great I am. There is no one like you, Jehovah. Demons tremble at your presence. 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 At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows and every tongue confesses that he is Lord. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the mighty man in battle. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. We exalt your mighty name, the great monarch of the world, the white horse rider, the I am that I am, the rose of Sharon, the bride and the morning star, the ancient of days, Shekinah glory, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. The head of all principalities. And I will not be silent. And I will always worship you. As long as I am breathing, I will always worship you. Elama Shataya, and I will, I will not be silent. And I will always worship you, worship you. Is that your confession this morning? As long as I am breathing, Lord, I will always worship you. Father, Lord, I worship you. We come together today as a congregation of the saints to worship you, to sing praises to your mighty name. Yes, Lord, we declare that you are God. We declare that you are God. And we declare that you are a good God. You are mighty, you are powerful. You are strong. You are mighty in all your ways. There is no one that can battle with you. Hey, no can who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Nobody, nobody in heaven and on earth. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. Who can stand against the Lord? There is nobody like you, Lord, in heaven, on earth, and beneath the earth. There is nobody like you. Hey, Mashata, I've searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Is that true for you? Nobody's great. Ah. Nobody's great. Nobody's greater than you. 
Ina kona mashabala tana bahaliata. Nobody's great. Nobody's great. Nobody's greater than you. Nobody is greater than you, oh God. I have searched all over and I have find no, found no one that is greater than you. I have found no one that is greater than you. You are the greatest. There is no competition. There is no comparison where you are. You are the strongest. There is nobody that can stand against you. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise. We give you all the praise, mighty God. You are awesome. You are awesome, Jesus. You are awesome. You are awesome. Even in our midst, you are awesome. Even in our midst, you are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are the great and the mighty God. Oh, Lana Mashabalatai. As we worship you, Lord, come and have your way. As we worship you, Lord, come and have your way. As we worship you, Lord, come and have your way. As we worship you, Lord, come and have your way. As we worship you, Lord, please come and have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Take total control of this life session. Holy Spirit of the living God, you are welcome in our midst. I submit myself and my faculties to you. Minister through me today. When you are done, Lord, take all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are all welcome into the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Johan Shaw, God bless you. D, God bless you. You are welcome. Anne Bell, God bless you. Bobby English, God bless you. Mrs. Liddell, God bless you. Val Nicole, God bless you. Vianna Moine Letsi, God bless you. Axe Manabat, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless everyone joining. Please touch the like button. Rachel Baptist, God bless you. Prophetic intercession with Chinyere, God bless you. Man of God, thank you for joining. Everyone coming, please touch the like button as you come in. Why not share this live broadcast on your status? Share on your timeline. Share, share, share. Hi, Gabby Bryant. Gabrielle, God bless you. YouTube profile, God bless you. Hallelujah. Christopher Bass, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Please touch the like button, family. Give the video a thumbs up. Everyone, oh, are you excited to be in the presence of God? It is always a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. Hi, Richard Jobar. God bless you. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. I am excited to be here again today. I am excited. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is someone happy to be in the presence of God? The psalmist speaking. He says, I was glad when they said to me, let's go, let us go into the present, into the house of God. Kosone nena. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for your presence in our midst today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for what you are about to minister to us today. We pray, oh God, that our hearts become fertile ground for your word that is going to yield fruits, is going to have an impact in our life. Father, you said you sent forth your word and it healed them. We believe you that today you are going to heal us. You are going to deliver us. You are going to open new opportunities for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God is about to do something very major in the life of someone. God is about to do something very major, very major in the life of someone. And that is why. And God doesn't want the same thing. Hi, Annabelle. God bless you. God doesn't want this. He doesn't want the same blessing that he's about to give you become the very reason why you, do, you are not blessed. Become the very reason why you do not succeed. 
God wants to do something very major in the life of someone. God wants to do something very major. God has picked interest in your life and he wants to do something specific. Something really great. Something very major. But now there is a problem. God doesn't want the very reason, the, very, his, the blessing that he gives you to be the very reason why you are going to leave him. Or the very reason why you sin. Or the very reason why you drift away from God. The very reason why you are not blessed. One thing I have come to realize with my little walk with God is that it, it really takes nothing for God to bless you. It takes God nothing to bless you. The only reason why, why sometimes it takes time is because God is working on you, the vessel. God is working on you, the vessel. If, uh, if, 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 if jewelry or pearls, the Bible says, do not give what belongs to, do not give jewelry to, to, to the pigs because they are going to trample upon it. If you give a pearl to a pig, you are wasting your time. It will not be valued in the hands of that pig. He's going to rub it in the mud and it's going to become as rubbish. So God wants to make sure that when the blessing starts coming, that blessing will not be trampled upon. It's not going to be rubbish. You are not going to drift away from him. You, you are not, the blessing is not going to be the very reason why you stay away from God. While the, the, the Israelites were in Egypt, they were about to leave Egypt. The Bible says that God caused the Egyptians to favor them. Please touch the like button, family. Let's give the video a thumbs up. He caused the Egyptians to favor them. They blessed them with goals. Enough gold. It wasn't difficult for God to touch the hearts of the Egyptians to bless them with gold. Now, the problem was that when they got to the wilderness and they experienced a little hard time, it was the same gold, the golden jewelries that were given to them by the Egyptians that they used to, to build for themselves an idol. The same blessing that God gave to them was what they used to build an idol for themselves. Can you imagine that? And so right now, God decides to bless you so much financially. God decides to bless you so much financially. He opens financial doors and the dollars start coming in, the pounds start coming in, the euros start coming in. It start coming in in their millions and it even gets to billions. And now it gets to a point in your life, you think that your money is your God. You start thinking that your money is your everything. You might not say it with your mouth, but you start, you, you start worshiping your money. That, that same blessing becomes the reason why you, you drift away from God. You start insulting people who have not made it yet. You start calling them lazy when God has just blessed you. Why, when God has just opened doors for you. You start looking down on people. You start insulting his prophets and his prophetess, his pastors and his preachers. You start coming down upon them. You become so arrogant. You think that your wealth right now is, is everything. Yes. Or God blesses you with, with a partner. God gives you a husband. God gives you a wife. And they become the very reason why you do not serve God. You feel like I already have what I, what, what, what I wanted from God. Why would I serve him again? I am already married. Why should I still keep seeking the face of God? I am already married. I am happily married. Why should I keep praying? Why should I keep serving God? He has already given me what I want. Maybe you were sick. And all through the time you were sick, it was a time you sought the face of God like never before. And immediately God heals you. You, 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 you become nonchalant when it comes to the things of God. You feel like you don't need God anymore. God wants to take you to that place where nothing matters to you. Anaka shabalatai. Anama shubalanama sobalata. God wants to take you to that place where nothing matters to you. Not the money, not the car, not the houses, not the children, not the, not the, not the, not the, not the nothing, nothing. You have it all and it is like you don't have anything. Ah, God wants to take you to a place where you have it all and it is yet like you have nothing. All 
you keep saying is, Father, you are all I want. Maleko shibala tanamaha. Jesus, I pour my love on you. You are saying, God, you are all I want. Yes, God wants to take you to that place where you are so blessed, but the blessing means nothing to you. The blessing means nothing to you. The blessing means nothing to you. God wants to break you to that point where, where you are so rich financially and yet the money is nothing. You have the best husband, the best wife, and you do not use it to spite people. Your children are blessed and it is not a, 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 a point for you to look at others' children and call them wayward and say that they, they do not have a good upbringing. God, it is coming. It is coming. But God does not want it to be the very reason why you drift away from him. My father preached a message a year, so many years ago. The blessedness of possessing nothing. The blessedness of possessing nothing. Where you have it all and yet it seems like you do not have anything. You have it all and it seems like you do not have anything. One of the, one of the criteria to know that God is going to bless somebody financially so much is when you have gotten to that place in your life where money is nothing to you. Where money is nothing to you. Money becomes a servant to you. You send money to run your errands. Money is nothing to you. The blessedness of possessing nothing. Now, God had promised, you know, Abraham was not a poor man. He was blessed in cattle and everything and everything. There was just one thing that Abraham wanted from God, a child. Abraham just wanted a child from God and God had promised him a child. Please, family, let's touch the like button. Give the video a thumbs up, please. Give the video a thumbs up. We have over 20 persons that are here to like the video. All Abraham wanted from God was a child. Like you are here right now, you are watching me. There is just this particular thing you want from God. Maybe you're, you're happily married. Maybe you already have children. Maybe you already have money. You have a family. There is just this particular thing that if God gives you, your life will be complete. And you are believing God for that thing. God is going to test you. Or God might decide to test you. God might decide to test you. To see if, if he gives you that thing. Will your heart be taken away from him? You have no idea. You have no idea. The Bible says that even King Solomon, the wisest man, he got married to so many wives that his heart was taken away from God. His heart was taken away from God. God does not want the blessing he gives you to be the, to the, to be the very reason why your heart is taken away from him. And so God decides to test Abraham. Now, God told Abraham, I'm going to make you father of many nations. After waiting for so long, God gave Isaac came. Isaac came. The promise, what he had prayed for, what he had believed God for, it had finally come. And God now lays a demand on that very thing. The very thing Abraham had prayed and believed God for, for, the, for all, all of his life. It came right now and God laid a demand on it. God says, I want this thing that I had given you. Give it back to me. Give it back to me, Abraham. Give it back to me. Do you know why Abraham is called father of faith? In his old age, he decided to sacrifice the very thing that God had promised him. Don't you think that he, if, if I were in the place of Abraham, I might think that is, that is Satan talking to me, cannot be God. Because this is my promise from God. This is my laughter. This is my prophetic uh, uh, assurance. This is my prophecy confirmation. This, this cannot be God. This voice I am hearing is the voice of the devil. It's like God, you, you have been believing God for a financial breakthrough and God drops something for you. And later you hear the voice, a voice telling you, sow it as a seed. You're like, nah, this can never be God. This cannot be God because this is what God promised me, has given it to me. It cannot be God. God gives you a, a spouse and it, and it tells you to live with that spouse as though you were not married. Give him back to me. I will give you a husband on the condition that you will give him back to me. God gives you a husband and that husband has a specific assignment. Maybe he is a preacher or God gives you a wife and God, and God tells you, I need you to sacrifice your marriage on the altar. You don't have to flaunt this marriage. You don't have to flaunt it. 
you have to give me your partner. Let me use him. It means that there are, there are nights you're going to have to sleep alone. There are times you're going to sacrifice. You go for months without seeing them. You are going to have to sacrifice this part of you. Just so that blessing can be established in your life. And you might start thinking, now nah, this is not God. This is not God. This is the devil. This is the devil. This is not God. It's right. It sounds like the devil's voice. But that is God laying a demand on the very thing he has blessed you with. God lays a demand. God will lay a demand on the very thing he has blessed you with. And it is how you are able to manage how God, the, 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 the outcome of that, that will determine if God can establish you in that. If God can establish you. And so Abraham goes and decides to sacrifice the child. I want to tell you something. The same Abraham that went up to the mountain is not the same that came back down. As far before Abraham could lift up that knife to pierce Isaac and he got in, in, interrupted by God. He had already killed Isaac in his heart. He had already killed Isaac in his heart. To him, Isaac was already dead. Isaac was already dead. Before you decide to finally give out something, you have already killed it in your heart. It is no longer existing. And that is what God requires. He wants you to kill it in your heart. Kill, you have money, but it seems like you do not have money. Kill it in your heart. God will give you a partner, but kill it in your heart. You do not have to, you do not have to boast about the things that he has given you. It should not be the very reason. If ever you should boast, you should make your boast in the Lord and not in the things he has blessed you with. So God says the blessing is coming, but I need you to, I need you to, to get to this point where you can be as though there is no blessing. One of the things that God has helped me, or I am praying for God to help me because it's not like I have arrived. I am still running the race. I am still trusting God for so many things is that I pray to God always that as he leaves me, May I always be humble. As he leaves me, may I not get to a point where my heart is lifted. May I not get to a point where I glory in the things that he has given me. May I not get to a point that I can withhold the blessing that he has given me. May I not get to a point, be it a child, be it a spouse. Maybe when God decides to bless me finally with a husband, let me not get to that place where he becomes everything and I cannot even serve God because of my husband. When I get to a point where I have children, I don't want to withhold them from God. That is my cry always. It is my cry that even as God blesses me, my heart should never be lifted. I should never sit one day and feel like I, I have arrived. Or I am better than someone else. I never want to get to a point where I feel like I am better than someone else. I pray to God every day to kill to kill possession in my life. I, I want to live as though I have nothing. Let the blessings of God not be the very reason why you drift away from God. The very reason why you sin. The very reason why you even go to hell. Can you imagine? They took the very things that God blessed them with to build a, an idol for themselves. An idol for themselves. You have to get to a place where nothing means anything to you. Where money becomes a servant. Where you are married, not because, not really because uh, uh, you want to get married, but because you want to serve God with your marriage. You know, if you want to serve God with your marriage, you're going to marry differently. You marry for the right reasons. You're not going to marry only because you love someone. But you're going to marry because you have realized that your purpose and this person's purpose comes together. You can fulfill purpose together. When you marry because you want to fulfill purpose together, you are not going to get a divorce because the marriage stops being about you. It stops being about the purpose of God. The marriage stops being about you. It starts being about the purpose of God. So you're not going to say, you are not going to say, I don't, he doesn't treat me right. So I want to get divorced. You're not going to say, I don't feel loved. I'm, I'm going to get divorced. You are going to know that this marriage is for the glory of God. So whatever happens, you are fighting to make it work. You make it work. God is going to bless you.
God is about to do that. If you are listening to me right now, it's because God has a special agenda for you. Please don't be the very reason why God is postponing your blessing. Because he wants, he doesn't want the, the blessing to be the, the reason why you, you drift away from him. You've got to be broken. Right now, maybe he is passing you through the fire. It is just for a purification. So that when you come out of it, nothing matters to you. Yes, YouTube profile. You tell yourself, that's what I signed up for. That's what I signed up for. The blessedness of possessing nothing. You get to that place where nothing means anything to you. You get to a point in your life where nothing means anything to you. The fact that you are homeless and you are living in church doesn't mean that God can. As a matter of fact, <laughs> Ah, there was a time when I was seeking, I was still seeking the face of God. It was, I was in my time of obscurity. I was in my moment of obscurity. Things were so difficult for me. I told myself, I'm going to start, I'm, I'm going to pack my things and go and start living in church. I will pack my stuff and go and start living in church because it is difficult. Does God stop being glorified in that place? God is not moved because he knows that the blessing is coming. God is not moved because he knows the blessing is coming. God is not moved because it doesn't take him anything to bless you. It just takes you to have the right mindset. It takes you to have the right mindset towards the blessing. It takes you to have the right mindset towards the blessing. Somebody under the sound of my voice. God is about to change your life in dimensions you never expected. God is about to bless you in ways that you never expected. God is about to blow your mind. It is coming. It is coming. Are you ready to receive that? Are, are you prepared to receive the blessing of God so much so that it doesn't matter to you anymore? Are you ready to be so, to be so blessed financially that finances do not matter to you? Yes, you are blessed, but it means nothing to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice that for some reason, your blessings have been held up because God was trying to align you. God was trying to get you to a place where you surrender completely and nothing means nothing to you. I pray that even as you prepare your heart right now, even as you say, Lord, please, even as your blessing come, my heart will not be lifted. May God begin to release that blessing over you in the mighty name of Jesus. May God begin to release that blessing over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Kalaba shantala bahande kosubahata. As God opened financial doors for you, you are going to live like money means nothing to you. How do you live like money means nothing to you? How do you live like money means nothing to you? I have come to realize there is only one way to get blessed financially. One, one, one way. Financial blessings answer to financial principles. For you to receive financial blessings, you must let go. You cannot hold on and you are blessed. When you hold on, your hands are like this, right? When you hold on to something, your hands are like this. And nothing can come in. Nothing can come in. Nothing can come in. When you hold on your hands are like this. Yes, there is a little hole here that you can struggle to squeeze something inside. But when you let go, God starts multiplying. He starts adding. He starts giving you even more than what you can handle. Kalaba shamalatana masobraha. When you, those are financial principles. You have to let go. That is how you, 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 you show that you have conquered. You show you have conquered by letting go. Abraham proved to God that he had conquered by letting go of that son. He let go of the child of promise. He let go. And God gave him so many sons. We are all the children of Abraham. Because he decided to let go. When you let go, even big things can come into your hands. Things that you cannot handle. See, this is bigger than my hands. But it can come into my hands because they are open. This is a Bible. It's bigger than my hands, but it can come because 
my hands are open. You have to learn how to let go. Let go. Remove it from your heart. That is the only way God can trust you. Whenever you keep your hands like this, nothing will come in. Nothing. It can't enter. When you let go, you are telling God, you can trust me. You can trust me with anything. I am not going to withhold. I am not going to withhold. I don't know if you know about boreholes, but here in Cameroon, because we have water issues, people resort to digging boreholes. And one of the ways that you maintain your borehole is by, is by you know, um, supplying water to so many people. What do I mean? You cannot, when you have a borehole, a particular household or just one person cannot use a borehole. It's not good. You, you will not be able to, 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 to sustain it or to manage it or purify it. For that water to be healthy, it has got to be to be supplied to so many people. So the more you give to others, the more you're purifying your water. The more you give out, the more you're purifying, you, you, you get purified and it becomes healthy for you to have that. Financial blessings answer to financial principles. So if you are believing God for increase in finances, it is only by giving. That is why billionaires have understood this and they spend a lot in their charity arms billionaires and millionaires in dollars in euro they have understood they have understood this and they spend a lot in charity in giving alms because they understand that that is the sure way of getting it back that is the surest way whatever you are believing god for make sure it doesn't enter your heart learn how to let go learn how to give Learn not to be lifted in your heart. No matter how God blesses you, decide that the blessing of God will not enter your heart. The money that God gives you will be a servant. That marriage that God gives you is going to be for his purpose. You are going to use that marriage to serve God. The children God gives you, you are going to give it back to him just like Hannah did. It doesn't mean that they will become priests, but no, you are going to let them to fulfill the purpose of God for their lives. You will not dictate to them what you want them to become. Hallelujah. God is about to do it. I pray you do not stop him in the mighty name of Jesus. God is about to do it. I pray you do not stop him in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you receive the word of God with gladness today? Did you receive the word of God with gladness? Just go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Tell God, even as you bless me, I will not withhold from you. Tell the Lord, even as you bless me, I will not withhold. Even as you bless me, I will not withhold. Even as you bless me, I will not withhold. Even as you bless me, Lord, I will not withhold from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I'm going to give us an opportunity. If you're letting your spirit, you want to plant a, a, a seed, you want to give an, an offering, a donation, you want to pay your tithes, I give you an opportunity to do that right now. You want to connect to whatever God is doing. In every life session, God is doing something specific. You want to connect to what God is doing in this life session today. I give you that opportunity. If you want to use PayPal, Cash App, Mobile Money, the information is at the top of your screen on the blue bar. If you want to use Super Chat and Super Sticker, it's still okay. Whatever you choose, comfortable. And please touch the like button, family. Please touch the like button. We have so many people, like 20 people who are yet to give the video a thumbs up. Please touch the like button. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We give you praises, Jesus. We're just going to give two minutes for that. And please, if you're paying your tithe, always indicate this is my tithe. I am paying so that you receive a tithe as prayer. It is very important. Please always indicate. Lord, even as you bless me, I will not hold back. Even as you bless me, I will not hold back. My heart will not be lifted. My heart will not be lifted.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray for the offerings. Father, we thank you for the giving of your people. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that has given an offering on PayPal, on Cash App, on mobile money. I pray may you bless their giving in the mighty name of Jesus. May their bands never run dry. Father, I pray for everyone that has planted a seed on PayPal and on Cash App as a sign of total surrender, as a sign of saying no matter what happens, they are not going to hold on. Father, may you honor their giving. Those who are giving sacrificial seeds, oh my God, there are people who are planting sacrificial seed. May God honor your sacrifice. Oh my goodness. Somebody just planted a seed and said, Lord, this is my Isaac. I pray may God honor your sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as you prove to him that if he gives you, you're going to give it back to him. May he honor your sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus. May he honor your sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. Wow. Where did that, where did that person come out with that? This is my Isaac. That is deep. That is deep. Thank you, Lord. May God multiply you in that area in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's take our daily declarations together. The favor of the Lord is upon me. My hands and my feet are anointed for exploits. The favor of the Lord is upon me. My hands and my feet are anointed for exploits. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You are blessed of God. You are blessed beyond curse. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you. The blessings of the Lord upon your life will not be the very reason why your heart is taken away from God. May God purify your mind. May God purify your motives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Unless your motives are set right, you cannot experience the blessing of God. Unless your motives are purified, you just keep eating from the crumbs until God can trust you with something. That is when you can, you will be, that is when you, you will see the fullness of it. Until you get to that place where you are trustworthy. Ha, say hello to your grandbaby, baby, baby. Say hello to, to them for me. Until you get to that place where God can trust you, you can really never see abundance in that thing you are believing him for. Hardly. You'll just be having crumbs and never abundance. I pray that God will be able to trust you. I pray that you get to that place where God will be able to trust you with his blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. I still see people planting their seeds. I connect you to your seed in the mighty name of Jesus. May God honor your sacrifice. May God honor your sacrifice. I see people planting sacrificial seeds. May God honor your sacrifice in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my goodness. May God honor your sacrifice. May God trust you with those things you are believing him for. May God entrust you with those things you are believing him for. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God entrust you with great things. May God put them in your hands. Great things. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba, Father. Father, do it and take all the glory. Do it, O oh God, and we'll return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty name. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. The shalom of the Lord. Nothing missing, nothing broken. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus. May God entrust you with great things. 
may God entrust you with great things. Everyone still planting their seeds on cash up. I connect you to your seed. May God multiply it in the mighty name of Jesus. Those that are still giving sacrificial seed, I connect you to your seed in the name of Jesus. May God honor your sacrifice. May God trust you with great things. May God trust you with great relationships. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I love you so much, family. I will see you in our next live session. Until then, have an amazing day. Bye-bye.